I remember the first time I heard about a that there was more than one different kind of R. I was sitting in my um, undergraduate class, one of them, and I remember watching the <laughs> professor walk up the aisle past my chair as she's explaining, you know, there are two different kinds of R's. There's something called a bunched R, where your tongue pulls back in your mouth as you you know, make the er sound, but there's also a kind called a retroflex R, where your tongue kind of goes up and back. And you know, you're gonna have to figure out how to teach um, these kids how to make make this type of R. And I remember like sitting there like, ah, 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 could not figure out like, what does she mean your tongue goes back? Like this retroflex R is a mystery to me. I avoided that retroflex R for years. I have perfected a great way to teach a bunch star, which I am gonna share with you um, in a few videos. Um, but I avoided it until I started working with this little girl and my tricks were not working. And we spent probably months, both of us extremely frustrated until I finally you know, was like, okay, here it is. I'm going to learn how to make a retroflex R so I can teach this little girl. So that leads me to the question, of first of all how do you know when to teach a retroflex r and how do you know when to teach a bunched r so before i get into that i actually want to blow your mind with a little bit of knowledge in my years of clinical experience and practice um, i have kind of come to realize that there is no such thing as you're a bunched R person and you fall into this category and you're a retroflex R person, you fall into this category. There's not these nice, pretty distinctive lines. In reality, we all actually make both a retroflex R and a bunched R and there's a bunch of variations in between. So here's what I mean by this. I want you to say, er, to yourself, er. You probably just made a bunched R. Your tongue went back and you saw this little arch at the back. Now I want you to go, R. Oh, did you see my tongue just pop up? R. I made a retroflex R. I did it without even thinking, without even trying. It depends on the kind of R that you're making as to where your tongue goes in your mouth. So now that we've established, we actually both can, all of us, make both, or both retroflex R people and we're all both bunched R people. Let's talk about that for a second. Um, I will admit, most of us do have a preference as to which R, um, first of all, as speech therapists, we like to teach. As I already indicated, I like to teach a bunched R. That's easier for me, I've got better cues for it. However, and that is because that bunched R comes naturally to me. Um, as far as you know, what I instinctively go to when I say er. However, um, some of us are more inclined to go towards that retroflex R. Um, that's easier for us to learn. So our job as speech therapists is to look at our students and decide, okay, which one do I think, you know, this child is more inclined to learn, you know, to learn. Um, and so there's a couple of things you can do to try. None of them are super foolproof. Um, but here's what I would do, um, or what I have started doing recently. Um, I kind of get my kids to practice saying er and are, and whichever one comes out cleaner, that is one thing that you can do to see, okay, if they're starting with the R and their tongue is going up, that gives me a little bit of a clue. So um, that maybe that R is gonna be where we need to start shaping the rest of our R's from. Um, alternatively, you know, you can just try to have a kid say an R sound and try to look in their mouth. Generally speaking, if they're giving you an R, their teeth are gonna be pretty closed um, if they're doing that bunched or doing an attempt at a bunched R. Um, you can, you know, kind of shine your light in there and see if there's an R and you can see that my tongue went up for that. So that is the trick that I use to decide if I'm going to be teaching a retroflex or a bunched R or which one I wanna start with. Um, if all else fails and you can't tell, there is nothing wrong with starting where you're most comfortable and seeing if that works for your student. 
What is not so great is if you say, I'm only gonna teach a bunch star because I'm a bunch star person and that's what I know how to teach. Um, you gotta be willing to kind of jump ship and play around a little bit if that doesn't work for your client. So nothing wrong with starting where you're comfortable if you can't tell where your student is more stimulable for that er bunch star or the R retroflex R. Okay, so thanks for sticking with me. I hope you found that um, helpful and informative as to you know when and how to teach a bunched R um, versus a retroflex when you should start teaching which one. Um, this is a video in a group of series all about R on just my personal teachings and ways that I do R. So if you wanna click to the next video, that would be great.